title to this week's video. Let's pray. In the name of the three who are love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three who are over my head, the three who are under my tread, the three who are over me here, the three who are over me there, the three who in heaven do well, the three in the great ocean swell, pervading three, O oh, be with me, pervading three, O oh, be with me. We confess our sins. The Father is always present. Forgive us for not reflecting your faithfulness. The Son is always self-giving. Forgive us for living for ourselves. The Spirit always leads us on. Forgive us for holding back. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Continuing our thoughts in the book of Genesis, we come to chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord Will Provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set off together for Beersheba. And Abraham stayed in Beersheba. I struggle with this story on several levels. Emotionally, as a father myself, the thought of being called to sacrifice your child 
and almost going through with it makes me shiver. Ethically, I struggle with the story, because I ask what kind of God would ask, issue such a command. Only later in the Old Testament narrative do we discover God's abhorrence of child sacrifice, and indeed it's one of the reasons that the Canaanite nations in the Promised Land are deemed to be under his judgment. But God hasn't revealed that yet. Abraham doesn't know that. We must be careful about what we read back into the story. I also struggle theologically because God had promised this son to Abraham and Sarah. He was the fulfilment of many promises and the result of a miracle. The command seems to make no sense. But this extreme story makes a point, an important one. Abraham learns that all he has, even the most precious gift of the son he and Sarah have had in their old age, belongs to God, not him. And it's when Abraham offers his most precious possession back to God that he's reminded how the Lord uses what we offer back to him for his own purposes. That's why we read all the way to verse 19 rather than stopping at verse 14, which the lectionary inexplicably does. We needed to hear where the angel relays God's reiteration of his promise that Abraham's descendants will bless all nations. What it comes down to is that we are stewards, not owners. We manage things on God's behalf that truly belong to him. So, in another part of the Old Testament, when King David calls for gifts to build the Jerusalem temple and leads by his own example, he says in a prayer, Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hands. It's a sentiment our Anglican friends encapsulate in an offertory prayer. They say, all things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Now, that's the obvious, immediate application of such principle. We give back to God in our regular giving. But that isn't the totality of it. This principle applies to the way we offer all things back in the service of God. You don't have to know me for long to know that I enjoy photography as a hobby. I inherited that love from my father. He once said to me, I've bequeathed to you an expensive hobby. And indeed he had. These days, to buy a good quality camera, you probably need to spend a four-figure sum. And that's without the lenses and accessories. But what if, alongside the personal pleasure of creativity, I gain from the hobby, I also offer it to the Lord in his service. Well, there have been times when I've been able to do that. Once when I was volunteering for a charity, I shot photos of the area where we served as a way of illustrating to people in the charity from other centres what our work involved, including a contrast between poverty and affluence on our patch. There have been many other examples too over the years. So, what do you have that is precious to you, which you can offer to God in his service? It doesn't have to be something overtly religious. Neither does it have to be a direct contribution to Sunday life at church. But if it contributes to the life of Christian discipleship on any of the seven days of the week, then it's something you can dedicate in Christian service. It goes without saying that this can be incredibly challenging teaching. It goes to the heart of things that are very precious to us. Is God out to make us penniless serfs in his kingdom? No. The good news in our story is that before ever God makes this call on us, he has subjected himself to it first. Take those famous words in the story where Isaac asks where the lamb is for the burnt offering and Abraham replies... God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And in the narrative, God literally provides a lamb. Well, a ram, actually. However, Christians have seen here a foreshadowing of Jesus, the lamb of God, who would be an offering for the sins of the world. If that's true, then what we have here is a pointer to the way that God himself 
gave up that which was most precious to him in the cause of his kingdom, namely his only begotten son, Jesus. So God is only asking us to do what he himself has already done. The Apostle Paul dwells on this and shows us the generosity of this God towards us. In a beautiful verse, Romans 8, verse 32, he says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? God, who asks everything of us, also generously gives us everything. God is a generous giver, so generous that he gives his very self to us and for us. It's why Christina Rossetti wrote in a Christmas carol, Love Came Down at Christmas. It's why Graham Kendrick, in one of his very early songs, wrote that Jesus was held to the cross, not by nails, but by love. This is the God who calls us to offer all that we find most precious back to him in his service. It's the God who offered everything that our sins might be forgiven, that we might find our way into his adoptive family, that our fear of death might be dissolved, and that we might discover the greatest sense of purpose in life that anyone can have, the cause of his kingdom that seeks to bless and heal the world. For these reasons, God offers himself. How then might we respond? If we followed Jesus for many years, this could be a time to evaluate where we are with him. Maybe we've been drifting away from Jesus and consequently drifting through life. Do we feel Jesus gently tugging at us to return? Or it could be that we've never knowingly responded positively to Jesus. Maybe COVID-19 has made us ask big questions about life. We might be one of those who has been googling spiritual themes in recent months. Do you sense yet that a God who gives so much out of love for you is drawing you to offer your life, gifts and talents back to him? If any of this resonates with you, I want to invite you to contact me. If you don't want to leave a public comment on social media, I understand that, but I suggest you get in touch with me through the contact pages for either of my two churches, Byfleet and Nat Hill Methodist Churches. I'll leave web addresses in the notes below the video. In the meantime, let's pray. Power of all powers, we worship you. Light of all lights, we worship you. Life of all lives, we worship you. Source of all life, we turn to you. Saviour of all life, we turn to you. Sustainer of all life, we turn to you. Ground of all being, we rest in you. Salt of all being, we rest in you. Unity of all being, we rest in you. Maker of all creatures, we honour you. Friend of all creatures, we honour you. Force of all creatures, we honour you. Love before time, we adore you. Love in dark time, we adore you. Love in present time, we adore you. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a blessing.
Into the sacred three I immerse you. Into their power and peace I place you. May their breath be yours to live. May their love be yours to give. Amen. Well, as, as usual, if you found that helpful, please add a like, a comment below. Um, please subscribe and hit the um, bell icon to get the instant notifications. And please feel free to share this on social media if you think others might find it helpful too. Other than that, see you next weekend, if not before. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.